Okay then, in today's Gary Explains video, we're gonna be talking about Rust and how you can use it on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, Rust has been kind of positioning itself as an alternative to languages like C and C++ uh, because it mainly has this memory safety, which should solve many of the problems we get uh, with security issues in C because of buffer overflows. And so we're not gonna go into Rust in this video in particularly. However, what we do know now is that it's a, an officially supported language on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So what do I mean by officially supported? Well, it's now been integrated into the official Raspberry Pi Pico extension for Visual Studio Code, which means it's now a first class citizen. So in this video, we're gonna use Visual Studio Code on a Raspberry Pi to program a Raspberry Pi Pico. So there's a blog post detailing all the stuff you need to know about this. We're just gonna walk through some of it quite quickly. So the first thing you need to do is actually install Rust itself on the Raspberry Pi. So that's pretty simple. You go to the Rust website, you click on get started, it will detect you on a Raspberry Pi, and basically you cut and paste this line here onto a command line, and that will go ahead and install Rust for you. Pretty simple, really. And once that's installed, you can check it's all working by running Rust C, the Rust compiler, minus minus version, and there it tells us 1.9.1, so that's great. Next, we move over to Visual Studio Code. Now, if you don't have Visual Studio Code installed, and here I'm on the bookworm version of Raspberry Pi OS, not the latest tricksy one, you go up to the menu here, and then you can go to Preferences, and there's its recommended software. This gives you kind of a short list of the most essential applications that you'll need on your Raspberry Pi. And if you go here into Programming, scroll down, Visual Studio Code, I've already got it installed, but you need to tick that, click Apply, and it will go ahead and install it for you. Now, once you're inside Visual Studio Code, you need to go over here onto the left and click this extensions. You can get there by Control, Shift and X, this extensions icon. And then in here, you need to start typing in Raspberry. And then you can see it here, Raspberry Pi Pico. You click on that and you install it. I've already got it installed. And when it is installed, you'll get this little icon over here on the left, the Raspberry Pi Pico. So to start a new project, we click on that. Now you've got different options here. And look, you've got new C, C++ project, which is how we used to do it before. We also used to be able to use MicroPython, but now there's a new Rust project. And that's what we wanna do. So we click on new Rust project. And it says, okay, where do you wanna put it? What name do you wanna call it? If you notice here, it's a bit in gray here, but it says Home Gary Source Pico Rust. So that's where I'm putting it. And we'll just call it HW, hello. Well, that's hardware, isn't it? Let's call it Hello W uh, to make it a bit clear. That's the, basically the Hello World. Now the Hello World on a microcontroller is actually just to flash the LED. So we go ahead and we click Create. Now that takes a few seconds for it to go ahead and create the project. So just let that finish. Okay, the project has been created. We can see it over here on the left in the Explorer. And of course the source code is under the SRC, source directory, and there we go, main dot, rs which is a rust file now the first thing to look at is that this file here just to blink the led is 125 lines long which is much longer than you would use if you had a just a c or a c plus plus program and the reason for that is that the sdk that raspberry pi provide covers a lot of this stuff in uh simple initialization calls but here in rust you have to do it all kind of by hand so we won't go too much through it now because i don't want to dive too much into rust i'm assuming you know a bit about it but it, it does work for the risk 5 core and for the uh, arm core and basically you're using this rp235x hal which is the hardware extraction layer or the rp2040 so it's a pi 1 or a pi 2 so that's the hardware abstraction layer that uh, gives you access to all of the hardware and if we scroll down here in the main function you've actually got to do some pretty low level work including setting up various clocks and setting up various peripherals this is stuff that in c is all just handled by the sdk but in the very end there's this loop here that goes round and Around and around and basically you can see how it works set high for the led pin and set low for the led pin and there's a delay of 200 milliseconds in between so you're going to get the led flashing on and off with a 200 millisecond delay now you've got to have your raspberry pi uh, plugged in and you've got to have it in the boot mode so that it appears 
as a, a USB device, which uh, Visual Studio Code will automatically copy the uh, file over. So let me put that into boot mode now. Okay, and then to run the project, we go back over to the Raspberry Pi extension here, and we can see here, run project USB, because we're connected via USB, not by any other uh, connections like the SWD connection, for example, run USB. So we'll click on that and that will go ahead and compile the program, as we can see here in the terminal window, and then also load it onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. And that's it. It's compiled and it's copied it over on to the Raspberry Pi Pico and it's rebooted the Raspberry Pi Pico. And now here we can see the LED flashing. Now it's also possible to print out over the serial port of the USB uh, not through the GPIO pins, but over the USB. So you can get some text out, which of course is great for uh, debugging and also just general useful information in whatever project it is that you're building. Now, this bit of code here I've taken from some examples on the internet. I've had to tweak them a bit to work with the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. But basically, again, lots of low level stuff setting up, you know, sit, look here, USB bus, you've got to set up all this stuff. But ultimately what we can see here is that we've got this serial dot right and it says hello uh, hello pico world that's my variation and then it just gives you uh, a timer how long the programs have been running uh, and that's it so what we're going to do again is we're going to put the raspberry pico into boot mode compile this and then run it and hopefully we're going to see some serial output now the way to see that serial output is to use the mini com uh, program here on the Raspberry Pi 5 and basically you're setting the board rate that minus small b and you're picking the USB device uh, with the big minus big d. So let's go ahead and run that and we'll wait for the output. And there you go, hello Pico world, and then that current timer in ticks as uh, I showed you there in the code. So there you go, Rust running on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is the Gary Explains YouTube channel. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please do check out my other videos. And if you like what you see, please do subscribe. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.